Hi, this is Mr. Beam, and I know that your summer is coming to an end, and we're getting ready to start our 2021 school year again. And I just wanted to stop and talk a little bit about uh, some of the possibilities for upper school robotics for this year. Um, this video's got two goals. Um, for those of you who may be either new to FTC or don't quite have a handle on what this is all about yet, I want to give an overview of what FTC is. It's the robotics competition that we as Garrison Forest have historically competed in. And um, I also want to talk about what it's like, what, what are some possibilities for what robotics can look like for this year. Uh, so if you've been with us for a little while, uh, the first part of this is not going to be new information, but if you're like brand new to this, it might be something that's interesting for you to be attentive to. Okay, so FTC stands for First Tech Challenge. Um, it's part of an organization called FIRST, uh, which is a nonprofit that's all about making accessible um, to people innovative programs that are geared toward young folks so that it helps them pursue an education and possibly jobs in the STEM fields. Um, part of it is, is that we're also supposed to be trying to help you get a little bit of your own self-confidence and gain some knowledge and you know, develop some life skills. So stuff like you know, building teams and working collaboratively and recovering from setbacks and things like that. Uh, first is actually an acronym. Um, it's not just a word here, it's, or a title, it actually stands for, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. So I'm going to give them a chance to tell you a little bit about what they're seeing in their own words. I think these kids can really make an impact in all different parts of the world. I will change the world by bringing STEM jobs to developing countries. I will provide emergency care for the less fortunate. It's important that kids have the skills to operate in this world, and the FIRST program helps prepare them for that. We've encountered many challenges with this, but we like come together, we discuss the problem, and then we go back and we try to fix it. I can't even fathom what these kids are going to go out and do. FIRST taught me what it meant to be an engineer, which is what led me to start my first company and get to where we are today. I am a leader. I am a network engineer. I am a scientist. I am first. I am first. I am first. I am first. And I'm just getting started. I am a big fan of giving credit where it's due. Um, first was founded by um, a scientist by the name of Dean Kamen. He's best known as a prolific inventor and is an entrepreneur in the biotechnical field. Uh, he began this entire enterprise back in 1989. So if you want to put that into perspective, I was a middle schooler when this all got started. So I'm going to also talk a little bit about um, part of what FIRST is, is it's learning through competition and cooperation. Um, but there's a certain uh, ethos to this whole thing about being uh, a gracious person and um, a professional. So I want to let them talk a little bit about that as well. Hi, I'm Woody Flowers, and I've been part of FIRST for a long time. I really love how FIRST helps us learn that Working hard can be fun and profoundly satisfying. In FIRST, we do our best work while helping others and treating folks with respect and kindness. This ethos is something I like to call gracious professionalism. As you go through this FIRST season, please remember that it is extremely important. In fact, it's expected that you practice gracious professionalism. Everyone, FIRST students, coaches, parents, volunteers too. It's not always easy, but it will make FIRST a sweet experience, and it can have a big positive impact in all areas of your life. So go be kind and creative. 
So the term that first likes to use for what they're doing is what they call cooperation, which is the idea that you're always in a competition, but you're assisting and enabling others where you can. And that's within your team and sometimes across teams. Um, it's about everybody learning, developing, and trying to get a little bit further in their ability to deal with robotics and STEM related ideas. Uh, there's a set of core values that are things that your team is actually judged on and it's your ability to demonstrate things like discovery, innovation, uh, how you can see what you're doing is impactful, to make sure that you're inclusive, um, that you work as team, and that you're having fun. Um, so these are things that actually they're the intangibles in some ways that are beyond just winning the points on the scoreboard that are also part of the whole process and part of what happens in the the judging at competition. Um, there are three first programs. Uh, there's a first Lego League, which is um, a completely autonomous uh, robot that is... Um, a pretty simplified version of what we do. Uh, this is geared toward lower and middle school students. The first tech challenge is what we do. Uh, this is a, something that is geared toward middle and upper school students. And some more advanced teams work with something that's called the first robotics competition, which are uh, some pretty larger robots that are um, pretty extensive and uh, pretty advanced in what they're doing. So. As a team builds up, we may, you know, venture into FRC at some point. We're not quite there yet, but you know, it's something that we could have as an ambition. Uh, FTC has teams up of up to 15 members. The members have to be between grades 7 through 12. Uh, the goal is ultimately to design, build, program, and operate robots that compete in challenges that are both doing it autonomously and via teleops. So they're driven through you know, some sort of uh, telemetry uh, usually works through what's basically a cell phone and a receiver. Um, this is done in an alliance format. There are adult coaches like myself, and uh, the co the parts of the kit can be reused, and we use a Java-based programming to um, control the robots. So this begs the question, what does robotics look like this year? Because as you dive into this, you're realizing that things like closed campuses and social distancing and all of this makes robotics kind of tough. Um, so let me start with the big question. And the big question is, is, will we be able to compete this year? And the short answer is, is I honestly don't know. Um, I, I wish I had a crystal ball and I could predict what's going to happen but I don't know the answer to that. Um, I do know that FIRST is doing some modifying so that it's more possible in our COVID reality to get up and to compete. I know that I have set up our team so that we are uh, up to date with all of our registrations. Uh, we have a practice space, we have a build space, we have all of, we have the entire robotics kit is here. Um, so we have all the pieces parts, but the question is, is will reality cooperate with us? Um, my move here is, is to make a two prong approach. One is to assume that we will compete. So I would love to, and if it is at all possible, we are going to try to get a team to competition. Uh, the second prong is, is regardless of this is to systemically develop our team whether we're going to choose to compete or not. Okay, so looking at this first prong, our first goal is to do everything that we can to prepare a robot for this year's first tech challenge competition, whether it happens or not. So we're going to try to advance it forward. We're going to try to do everything we can um, in hopes that it can happen. Uh, first, has developed some ways for us to be able to compete without having uh, multiple teams competing in one place. Um, 
we work with a, a an organization called First Chesapeake this year that is our um that organizes our competitions and we're going to follow their lead on implementing this and if it lines up with our school's guidelines and with what our school deems says safe we're going to try to get there um we will start on anything that we can do as and do as much designing as possible given the restrictions of our school and our school year your safety and health is always the priority but if we can do it, we're going to do it. Um, now, that said, we're already in a position where even the first of us that are going to arrive on campus probably won't be arriving until early October. Some of us maybe not until January. So we need to be somewhat real about what we can and cannot do here. But I think we've got um, a lot of room that we can move. All right. So why is this prong important? Um, this prong is important because if we can compete, we should compete. Like if we can pull it off and get a robot to competition, we should get there. So this is why I've gone and I've registered. I've gotten the kits. I've gotten everything that we can do. I'm not willing to scrap it this year because I think it is, you know, given our best efforts, we probably can bring a robot to competition, but we're going to have to do some creative thinking and some clever planning and we can make this happen. Um, the second thing is, is that if we can't, then we're building a team, right? And we're learning what we can about how to become a competitive team. So even if we can't bring the robot all the way to competition, still having the intention to do it is going to get us um, a broader skill base and a stronger team. So this prong is important. That's the first uh, plan A is get a robot to competition. All right. So prong two is to systemically develop our team. So what does this look like? Um, it looks at learning how to better implement the engineering and design process within the FTC model. Um, and this is including doing better documentation in an engineering journal. So this is like a place that we can do some growth and make that work. Um, we can work on our skills uh, using 3D drawing tools to be able to do rapid prototyping. And this is a set of skill base that we need to work at. Uh, we can learn to be better robot coders. Um, so when it comes to controlling the robot, we need a more robust capacity to code in Java and to be able to make the robot do what we want, when we want, and how we want. So that's another piece that we can build some capacity in. And we can build our relationship with the community. Uh, and this is about reaching out to uh, more talented members and trying to help make connections to build the strength of our program by building a knowledge base of people around us that can help us become a more robust reality. And we can also look at building our community outreach in order to be contributors to STEM education at large. So in this, how do we become a group that shares our knowledge, our experience, and becomes not just consumers, but also producers in that end of things? Um, so what can you expect from me? Uh, in the next week, you're going to get a Zoom invitation for an initial team meeting. I haven't completely landed on a time for that, but I want to get you through all the orientation and uh, the first couple of days of classes. I'm trying to also acknowledge the time zone differences because we are literally on multiple continents trying to figure out how to make this work. So um, my brain is thinking at this point that possibly the best time to do this will be um, actually a Saturday morning in Eastern Standard Time, uh, probably around 9 a.m. Uh, I know that that's like an awkward time, but if we go into afternoons, that becomes difficult for uh, folks in China. If we try to do it during the school day, we're going to have people hitting and missing because of classes. So I'm thinking that a, a Saturday morning, 9 a.m., and it'll probably be the first Saturday uh, 
of the school year here. So we'll get through the first week of classes and orientation. It'll be the Saturday leading into, um, what do you call it, uh, Labor Day weekend. So um, look for that Zoom invitation. I'm going to probably put that up around 9 a.m. on that Saturday morning and get as many people together as possible to just kind of start fleshing out how to be able to do this in an international and distanced way until we can get some more people on campus and we can actually work in the same room together. Um, 9-12 is the international launch for uh, the FTC competition. So I would like to try to do something for that. I'm working on details about that. And what I would like to do is probably it'll be happening Sunday nights into Monday. So this is, you should be getting this video probably late of the week that we're in right now. Um, the next update you should expect from me will be uh, uh, the following Sunday into Monday, just kind of giving you an update on where we stand. So I want to give you a weekly update via email about that. Um, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a huge challenge and a huge lift to pull it off. If we pull it off, it'll be awesome. Um, I don't think a lot of schools in our region are going to actually be able to put it together. Um, so we could be a fairly competitive group if we do pull it off. If we don't, there's no sadness. I mean, it's like we're, we're going to learn from this and we're going to do some building and we're going to make this work as best as we can. So look for that Zoom uh, link from me. Like I said, it'll probably be set up for around 9 a.m. on the Saturday after the first week of school. And we'll go from there. Um, email me if you got questions, ideas, suggestions, uh, anything that I can help with. And uh, I really miss you guys. And I look forward to seeing you in classes and stuff like that online in this next week. But I also look forward eventually to seeing you in person and making it go. All right. So thank you very much.